In another development, suspected gunmen attacked Casina Ala and Logo Loko government areas during the early hours of Monday. Local residents allegedly reported that bodies were recovered in the local government areas. A community leader in Logo local government, Joseph Anawa, says the assault occurred on the Azegic settlement and that the surrounding areas of Tumbo Council Ward were also attacked. It was gathered that armed individuals carried out the attacks estimated to be over 300 and believed to be militia from outside Nigeria. It says the security forces present were unable to fend them off due to their overwhelming numbers and advised, advanced weaponry. Joining me tonight is the Chief Press Secretary to the Governor of Benue State, Tesso Kula. Mr. Kula, thanks for joining us on the news. A lot of confusion around this story. 300 militia came into Nigeria to kill over 30 people. Help us understand the details, especially the numbers. Yes. Um, you know, that number is merely a speculation. What we got from uh, men of the Nigeria army that are on ground is that only four people were killed and for those four corpses were also recovered. And I must tell you that yes, the attack happened at Logo precisely uh, at Azege, a border town between Benue and Taraba State. And the armed arrest men came from Taraba State. They came from that Aziz, attacked the natives on their farms, and they were able to kill four. The casualties would have been more than that, Save for the timely intervention of the men of the operation of where we struck that are already on ground and because logistics has been made available, it is easier for them now to respond very quickly to such attacks. Mr. Kula, just when a minute. Now, let us, uh, this is what the local, local government chairman is saying, Clement Cav. He said, and I quote, they attacked the Tombo Council Ward and killed 17 persons, injuring 37. That's from the local government council chairman. Would you believe his numbers? Uh, no, we, uh, yeah, he's the local government chairman, but he's not on the, uh, incident uh, said the people of uh, the Nigeria Army that are on the scene told us, reported back, that they saw four corpses and the nobody has come power to say that I have not seen this person, I have not seen this person. So it is believed that it is the four corpses that I have seen. Of course, he was bound to give such numbers because at the point it happened, some people were hiding in a bush. Some people, I told you that they attacked the farms. And because the attack came, some people ran away and hid themselves in the bush. And by, by the time they were here to come out, it was assumed that they were dead. That was why that number was given. But when they came out, and when the military came to repair the attack, the people now came out, and only four corpses were picked. At the time, that the local chairman spoke. He spoke because some corpses were yet, I mean, some people were yet to be seen. All right. And because they were yet to be seen, it was assumed that they were dead. The security. Indeed. The security yes, personnel, I mean, we understand, were overwhelmed by the, um, the, the manpower and indeed um, the arms and ammunition that these um, individuals came with. What is the current security situation now? And what is government no, doing to fix believe, that? I don't, I, I don't believe that. If they were overwhelmed, they would have even killed the security forces. But no security force, uh, no security personnel was killed in that uh, attack. Rather, 
the men of this uh, joint task force were able to repair these people and they went back. And so if they were wind, overwhelmed and they, are, they have superior power, uh, firepower, certainly would have paid casualties from our security forces too. But there was none. So it is not true that they were overwhelmed. The security forces were gallant. They were able to repair the attackers and they fled back to where they came from. And we believe because we don't go to, I mean, we don't have an idea of where they were coming from and where they are. All right. uh, we don't know whether they were even casualties on their side. But let me tell you this. Reverend Father has said, has made everything possible. He has provided logistics. And the men of the Operation Wise Road are always on ground. They're always on ground. They have been strateg strategically positioned in, the, in this prone areas. And they are all ever ready to respond uh, as soon as uh, they got a lot of, of such key missions. And I uh, also let, let, want you to know that for now that we don't know what this face may want, uh, I believe that they will keep coming. They will keep coming. But what is more important is that as they come, what happened? What happened? Because on our own side, on the side of the state government, Reverend Father Hassan Yomalia has done uh, the needful All right. uh, for security forces to be able mm. to checkmate this, 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 uh, I hear you clearly, Mr. Kula. We have completely run out of time. Thank you for your contribution on the news tonight. Chief Press Secretary to Governor of Benway State, Tesso Kula. You're welcome. Thank you so very much. Meanwhile,